Ladies, gentlemen, I've been writing a lot about the Monte Carlo method lately, and today I would like to demonstrate how it can be used in practice. Thanks to Ingo Bressler, we now have a graphical user interface which should make it much easier to use the program. I found a dataset from one of the magnesium zinc alloys that we studied before, uh, which we can use for this demonstration. So let's move to the program. Now here on my desktop I have a terminal window from which I will start the graphical user interface. You can also start a graphical user interface from the executable as you can download it from the internet. And over here I have my dataset. My dataset is simply a semicolon separated file. So you can see here the values for Q, intensity and the uncertainty on the intensity or uncertainty estimate which are separated by semicolons. And this is all that's in, that's in this text file. So, when I start my user interface, it looks like this. Uh, I can now load the data file. Here we go. Uh, so here we have our data file loaded. It's in this list. Uh, we see the number of data points as well and we see an estimate for the minimum and maximum size uh, if we have spheres. So if I double click this line, the sphere size estimates get uh, transported to the model settings over here. The Monte Carlo settings are on this side of our user interface. The default, as you can see here, is actually quite a sensible uh, starting point. So then we click start, there we go and then we wait a while. So at the end of the Monte Carlo process uh, we see that it's completed uh, successfully in this window here. The results window should come up which looks like this. We see on the left hand side here the uh, measured versus fitted intensity as you can see the Monte Carlo method using spheres fits quite nicely to this data. The resulting size distribution is shown here on the right hand side uh, with the radius on the horizontal axis and the volume, volume fraction on the vertical axis. When we look at the electron micrograph of the sample however we see that the scatterers are cylinders and not spheres so we need a different scattering model for this scattering pattern. The closest that we have at the moment is a different model, which is isotropic cylinders. I can now start a, a Monte Carlo fit using cylinders instead. So after this fit is completed, you see that the result now is actually, uh, is actually fits the data equally well. Uh, again, we have reached convergence. Um, and that the radius of these cylinders now spans between 1 and 30 nanometers. This red dotted line is sort of a is, is the minimum observability line. Uh, you need at least this contribution for this bar for it to make a significant impact on the scattering pattern. We plan to make it easier to fit sequences of data and to extract the distribution parameters from it. However, it will take us a few more months before this is in place, so please bear with us as we further improve the program. Thank you very much for watching.